<laughs> we're live. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Cherie. I'm Chris. And we're Technomadia. And it's been a long time since we've done one of these YouTube live thingies. It's been a um, long time since we've done much YouTube anything on the Technomadia channel. It's just <laughs> the mobile internet resource center is keeping us so busy and all that stuff we just showed. I mean, that's just that's it's our nonstop. Fun. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun doing non internet y things. And yeah, so I thought we were supposed to be retired from that mobile internet y thing. Semi retired. Semi retired. Semi yeah, retired. So still taking up a lot of time. And but we're having fun. Yes, we enjoy it now. It doesn't stress <laughs> us out as much, which is great. Anyway, this is a rare crossover event. As many of you know, Technomadia is our personal travel channel when we're sharing more about <laughs> cats, wine, boats, adventures, solar, lithium sometimes, that all that stuff. sort of stuff. Uh, but mobile internet is our day job over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and we try to keep a division line between that and not answer internet questions in our yep. personal time. It's yep. kind of like going up to your doctor and <laughs> asking them to look at a ward. Yeah. So normally when we're doing anything Technomadia related on the Technomadia channel, it is, on all the people who come in, chime in, know this in the chat room, no internet questions allowed, only ask those over at the Mobile Internet Resource Ch Center channel and on the website and on the forums and in the Facebook group and all the places we answer those questions all day. But this is the rare time we will actually take internet questions here so in the, on this live. And so, hey, this could be fun. We're going to be talking about our setup and showing you a tour of it. And then after that, we will be taking questions and answering questions. So first, uh, we created a video tour of our mobile internet setup, which features six 5G cellular Starlink and Marina Wi-Fi. We filmed Eight this. bonding. We filmed this about a month ago. Some great Anchorage scenes from uh, out here on Lake Moreau in Sanford. Um, and we published this over on the Mobile Internet Resource Center channel. So if you're interested in tracking mobile internet topics specifically, go join that channel as well. But we're going to do a replay of it first. It's about 19 minutes. So if you've already seen it and don't want to see it again, yeah, go take go a 19 a minute break. And we'll be back in about 19 minutes to answer questions. Go ahead and queue up questions in yes. the chat room. And we'll be hanging out in the chat room, too, So yeah. I think. So yeah, so here we go. We're going to start the tour. So yeah, bye-bye. What is our personal mobile internet setup? That is not an easy question to answer because it's changing all the time. But we're going to do our best and show you a snapshot of how we stay connected right now. Right now. Right now. Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we are the founders of the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And if you have found this YouTube channel, then you might not know much about us personally and our story on the road. So we've been living and working full-time technomatically for 16, pushing 17. 17 years now, working online the entire time and keeping ourselves connected the entire time, so much so that so many people turn to us for advice on, well, how are you doing that? How are you staying connected? Help me. That it turned into our full-time jobs and became the Mobile Internet Resource Center. Now, we both had tech backgrounds when we met and hit the road. We worked in technology. So it was a natural transition. And it really does merge our personal passions of technology, wanderlust, and helping people. So we've been running Merck since 2014 as our full-time careers. We ditched the other jobs. <laughs> And now, all through this time, you know, even before that, we get the question of like, well, what is your personal setup? Just tell me what you personally use to keep connected. And I'll go buy that. And I want to buy that. <laughs> but we tell people, don't copy us, number one, because we're often testing gear, equipment, and plans, and lots of other things, um, just because we need to be knowledgeable to help other people. So we have a lot of gear that we wouldn't necessarily buy ourselves, or maybe we would, or sometimes we have, we have gear and plans that are no longer available anymore. So the snapshot of what we're using to stay connected personally changes a lot and is sometimes not always the best idea to replicate exactly. We firmly believe there is no one right solution for everyone. There's not even a lot of right solutions that fit most. Mm -hmm. We all have to evaluate our unique needs and find our unique setup based upon what is currently available. And that currently available is the big gotcha, is this stuff does change all the time. But we have a setup now on our boat, yeah. why not? We also have a, a van and a motorhome bus that we travel in. We split our time between three different nomadic vessels. And at any one time, the setup and um, is completely different. Right. We have installed a setup that we've been using for about two or three months now, which is like forever <laughs> in our terms. And, and it's basically the, the what we consider the, the ultimate setup right now for a boat like this. We actually are able to bring together 
Um, well, often our common operating thing is we bring together six different 5G plans and services and devices simultaneously, plus Marina Wi-Fi, plus Starlink, all brought together and combined in a redundant, bonded way with Peplink's speed fusion technology so that we have just this incredible amount of redundancy and um, ability to get our work done and to test a lot of different stuff as well. So we can do fast uploads, fast downloads, try different gear, different combinations. But overall, it's been a really great setup and it works really well. I love having so much diversity and redundancy. We literally have connectivity coming out our ears, but we want to preface this. What we have, you probably don't need. No one needs no, this much no. redundancy. It's, it's fun, though. If you're into it, have fun. It's fun. It's fun. I personally can be pretty happy just hotspotting off a smartphone for a lot of stuff. Yeah. I can use a mobile hotspot device. My needs are actually kind of basic. But <laughs> they would be. If I was living my dream world of not having to work all the time. But what we do here at Merck with doing lots of these YouTube videos, we do a lot of webinars, we have a lot of video conferencing calls with other industry uh, professionals. We're doing a lot of video content, which requires a lot of bandwidth, especially uplink. Yes. And that up does always. give us a lot of need. Yeah. And, and then also, of course, we, we live full time technomatically and all of our social and a lot of our social life and entertainment is over internet as well. So we want to be able to stream and we don't want to slum it. We've got a big 4K TV. We want to be able to stream in 4K. <laughs> Sometimes we want to be able to both watch something different at the same time. And then our cat, she is the ultimate user of Bandit. She is obsessed with watching bird videos on YouTube. So she uses a lot of 4K streaming herself. You know, so cat videos. Now, a lot of the equipment we're going to show you is from Peplink. It is a very popular option for the RVing and boating community. It has become very consumer accessible. It, and Peplink has gone to great lengths to make their stuff more and more consumer accessible. And they listen to us. We've been beta testers forever. And um, we were Peplink customers buying their gear long before we started uh, uh, testing it and getting early access to stuff. So it probably would still be what we would buy if we were spending money on this. So what we have now is the pinnacle of technology as of March 2023 when we are filming this. Anything can change and this stuff that we're showing today is not necessarily stuff that we recommend. We're going to give you a lot of caveats throughout of why you might want to hold off on purchasing <laughs> some of this equipment at this present. But time. on the other hand, this is all great stuff. A lot of this equipment is provided on extended loan, both between Peplink and our education and action partner at Mobile Must Have. We have partnered with Mobile Must Have for the last couple of years now. Uh, they offer our membership as part of their membership now. So if you want to join with them, you can get our yeah. membership or you can join directly with us. It all works. Uh, they offer discounts to our members that can bring the cost of this equipment down quite a bit less, well, at least more than the cost of the membership. <laughs> um, they also provide technical support in our forums and we co-host a couple of webinar series with them every month uh, for our members to go deeper. And we have a Peplink Resource Center that we have built out with them with a lot more in-depth content on using this sort of stuff. Okay, is that enough caveats? That's enough caveats. Now, do you want to see the cool geeky stuff? And let's go on a tour of the tech side of our boat. Welcome to the tech cabinet of our boat, Why Not? This is where the magic happens, where all the wires come together and uh, where our technology kind of lives. And the star of the show here is the Peplink Max BR2 Pro 5G. So this little router we have mounted on the wall brings together up to, uh, currently we've got eight different uh, WAN connections coming into it. So it's got two built-in 5G cellular modems. It's got two built-in Ethernet WAN ports. It's got a USB WAN port. It's got a whole bunch of LAN ports, one of Ethernet LAN ports, one of which can be reused as an additional WAN port via Peplink's vWAN technology, which is new in the Peplink 8.3 firmware that just came out. Um, so it has a whole lot of capability there. Plus it also has Wi-Fi as WAN, so it can connect to other networks, other Wi-Fi networks, and use them as its upstream. So what do we have coming in together here is, well, obviously we've got the two cellular modems, which we put two different 5G plans in and get connected. We can change those around. Um, we've got one of the ethernet ports connected all the way up to the roof of our boat up on the radar arch to a Peplink HD1 Dome Pro 5G. It's a, another externally mounted uh, dome with a 5G uh, modem in it. So that's our third 5G modem there. Plus that also has Wi-Fi as WAN in it with the Wi-Fi antenna is mounted way up on the radar, so that's what we use to connect it to Marina Wi-Fi. So that brings in the Marina source. 
and uh, works great with no cable loss because it's connected from here to here via Ethernet using Peplink's Synergy Mode, also a new feature in the 8.3 firmware that lets this router control that router as if that router's capabilities were just built into here. So we get those two extra WAN ports there. We've got another USB port here that is connected up to the Max adapter. This is a Peplink's Max adapter 5G. So it's an external USB connected 5G uh, modem. So it's four more, well, it's uh, one more 5G connection. So we're up to four 5G connections now. The next ethernet port is going to our Starlink dishy system. The Starlink router is tucked there in the back of the tech cabinet. Starlink is mounted up on our radar arch. So we've got the Starlink combined with the four 5G connections. We've now got one of the Ethernet ports on the Max BR2 coming out, and we use it for all our various different 5G hotspots that have Ethernet ports on them. So we can hook up another 5G hotspot that we can easily take with us when we leave the boat, or just plug it in here for both power and connectivity. So we get another 5G option. And then we use Wi-Fi as WAN coming out of the Max BR2 here, to sometimes talk to our smartphones to have an additional 5G connection. So that brings us six 5G connections, um, plus Starlink, plus Marina Wi-Fi, all going at once. And we actually technically could add two more um, via additional Wi-Fi as WAN connections, but those would be 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi as WAN, which is not really worth it. So a lot of connectivity coming together in that Max BR2 Pro. Okay, so Chris got to be the good mobile internet resource center guy. I get to be the bad guy. So what are the downsides of the Max BR2 Pro 5G? Well, first of all, the cost. It's $28.99. That's $2,899 for a dual 5G router. It offers a lot of capability, but that's a lot of money to outlay on a router, especially when you can buy two individual ones for cheaper. Next, the modems inside. They are 5G modems, but they are X55, which is kind of one of the first generation of 5G modems that are out there. They're fine for today's technology, mostly, but they we don't consider them to be very future-proof. And there's a lot of reasons why. If you want to check that out, go check out our modem updates that we have done to go deeper into why X55 is not the technology you want to be investing in if you want something that's going to be modern in a year or two from now. We are anxiously awaiting router companies to be able to start having routers with more advanced 5G modems, which will make these a lot more future-proof for longer. So that's a lot of money to invest um, for a router. Now that's one reason why we use these hotspot devices as external WAN inputs into that router. It's because this Netgear Nighthawk from AT&T, it has the X65 chipset in it, which is modernized and better for being on AT&T's network. So that allows us to have the X65 technology routed into our Peplink router until they are able to catch up in time. Now let's talk about Starlink and why we don't use it as our one and only connection. It is a great option. We're great to have as part of our arsenal, but it's also got some downsides. And number one is power usage. Out here, we're trying to run off of solar and this thing sucks up the battery capacity pretty quickly. If we forget to turn this thing off overnight, we wake up to a dead battery in the morning that we have to recover from, run the generator or sacrifice in other ways with our power usage. So we use it sparingly when we are on the hook or boondocking because of that power usage. Also, the other downside for us personally is the upload speeds are not quite fast enough for what we need to do. We're uploading large videos like this video. Uh, if I try to upload this video over Starlink, it could take several hours. If I do it over some of our cellular connections, I can get that down to under 30 minutes. That's a huge difference for us. So we still use cellular quite a bit. We're also doing a lot of broadcasting with webinars where we need that reliability on the uplink power. So we always bond our Starlink connection in with other cellular that is working at our current location to get that maximum reliability of combining those multiple sources. Now, we do have obviously a lot of cellular data plans, more than we need, but we keep a lot of legacy plans around for testing and ongoing. You know, some of these plans you can't get anymore, and they have 
great terms or unlimited data. And we also get a lot of the new current plans to test them and see how well they work and put them into different bits of gear and see how what they do. So we have a lot of cellular plans. And one of the ways we help manage all of that is we actually have a Peplink SIM injector over here that actually has eight SIM slots. And so with that, we could then from the Max BR2 or the HD1 Dome, um, select the SIMs, basically assign the slots from the SIM injector, the SIMs there, like a library, and check them out into the BR2, either of the two modems in the BR2, or into the HD Dome, so we can easily compare them, shuffle them around, change out the SIMs without having to fiddle around with those tiny little plastic bits. Um, again, it does save us some time and sanity, but the SIM injector is a bit of expensive gear that we probably wouldn't have. We'd put up with that frustration if we weren't doing this testing and juggling so, so many different plans. But you know, one of the big differences, and one of the reasons we do play with the SIM injector, is because the Max BR2 is hooked up the two different modems on it are hooked up to two different 5G antennas, and sometimes we want to change which plan is going to which antennas. So let's go talk about what is up on our radar arch and, and keeping us connected. Welcome to our Flybridge, where we have three different antenna setups going on here. First, in the HD dome, there are four antennas inside of that dome directly connected to the modem, which means there's no signal loss between the antenna and the modem, which is great. However, the antennas inside the dome are not necessarily high gain, so that's why we have the other antenna setups. Right here, we have the Peplink Maritime 40G, which is a 4x4 MIMO antenna. This thing is massive. It's like a baseball bat size. And that is going down into one of the modems on the Max BR2 Pro 5G. And then the other antenna we have is left over from an old setup that we had with a 2x2 MIMO setup. It is by pointing. So it's only at two antennas inside of it. And we're testing that right now with the Max BR2 in the two antenna mode, which is a new feature also in the 8.3 firmware. We'll probably eventually replace this with another 4x4 maritime antenna that might come out by other companies uh, in the future. But for now, that is our setup. Now, as for the local network on our boat, um, because our boat is fairly big, um, having just the Wi-Fi access point coming from the Max BR2 gives pretty poor performance up in the bedroom when we want to you know, check our email and see what things are going on when we first wake up in the morning. So we actually have pulled wired ethernet to as many places as we could easily reach across the boat, as well as when we did it when we were running all the antenna cables as well. So we've got wired ethernet going to a lot of places. We've got ethernet switches going to a lot of places so we can spread that ethernet out even more. And we have as many devices hooked up to physical hardwired ethernet as possible, particularly our network attached storage device, our um, all of our streaming devices, our TVs, our um, gaming systems, our streaming devices, everything like that, all physically wired so they're not trying to put that traffic over Wi-Fi, which Wi-Fi, particularly in a marina, can get very, very congested. Now, but of course we do want Wi-Fi, and since the, the Wi-Fi on the Max BR2 has trouble reaching the bedroom. We've also added in a dedicated Wi-Fi access point. It's a Peplink AP1AX Lite that we've got mounted actually under the dash of our boat, and that gives really great coverage to the flybridge, the pilot house, and the bedroom. And then the Max BR2 kind of covers the Wi-Fi in the salon. So they work together, and it basically just all one SSID, one network name, just works everywhere we go, kind of as a unified system. It's really worked great that way. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of gear. Oh my gosh, it is. And we could keep babbling on forever <laughs> about all this stuff. In fact, that's how the Mobile Internet Resource Center Got uh, started. started is we talk about this stuff a lot, probably too much, uh, but we do have a ton of other content that goes over all of this equipment, the basics of it, how to select it, what's right for you. So come over to rvmobileinternet.com to get started. We have free content as well as the deeper content that is included for our members. You know, if you're going to have particular questions about our setup and why we made the decisions we did and what we would do differently, we actually are going to be sharing about it in the shared stuff, uh, share your setup uh, form over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center for our members. So if you've got questions, you can ask them there as a member. Uh, and we will have a companion article on the Technomadia blog going over all the components that we just did in the setup. We'll probably have a diagram uh, put together of all this as well as a cost sheet because I'm kind of afraid to know how much all this what setup is. What the retail is. price would be. Yeah, because yes. um, we do 
do have the advantage that we work with Peplink and uh, Mobile well, Must Have, our friends over there, and get all this gear on evaluation if on, for, so that we can have uh, hands-on experience with it uh, for our uh, members. On the downside is that means it's always work and we're always testing stuff that's not sometimes in beta shape and all that other stuff. But There's yeah. no such thing as free gear. <laughs> really, there isn't. No, <laughs> and it's all on loan, so you know, it'll go back someday potentially. But. Yes. When the new stuff comes out, <laughs> yeah. cycle it out. <laughs> Uh, so this stuff is changing all the time. Like I said, this was filmed in March 2023. If you're watching this any other time, who knows what we actually have installed on our boat, our van, or our bus at present time. Because yep. we always are changing out for the newest, the latest, and the greatest. Because <laughs> that's our job. That's our job. Aren't, aren't we supposed to retire? Wait, we should be doing less of this. And yes, and actually, we are going to have our team members share about their setups as well. So it's not just us sharing this sort of level of geeky detail. Yes, so uh, stay tuned on this channel. Um, our other team members um, who are also various forms of nomads, they will be sharing their setups. And um, you'll see there's a wide variety that's out there. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go about assembling your unique mobile internet setup, and there really is no one right way. Yeah, but there's so much good ways to stay connected. And the more redundancy, the better. Except maybe you go too far. <laughs> we went too far. We went too far, okay. <laughs> too, far. too far. Just slightly. Just slightly. Too far. These videos These are, are brought, brought to you. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, that was a lot of gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ken's over there saying he's overwhelmed. Lots to learn. Yes, it is a lot. Um, <laughs> and again, you don't need this much. We don't need this much. There are much simpler solutions. And the trick to finding your unique mobile internet setup is starting with non understanding what your needs are. Um, if you aren't doing a lot of this video broadcasting stuff, you probably don't need the redundancy that we do to get those upload speeds. Yes. Uh, anyway, if you have questions about our setup, about yeah. mobile internet, we are here to chat for you know a little bit longer. So queue up those questions <laughs> in the chat room. We're happy to take mobile internet questions. Yeah. Uh, this is your one and only <laughs> chance, rare chance. If you ask us mobile internet questions any other time outside of RV mobile internet, yeah. It's usually not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, particularly this is the chance to talk about the stuff that we've done on our boat and maybe what we would do differently if, if we weren't testing so much gear. Like some of the things, I, I do love the redundancy. I could show, actually, I got here. This is the dashboard with our eight-way bonding going on. There's, I'm sure his head is. <laughs> yeah, so eight connections at once is really frigging fun and you know does does some really good things um like right now for this broadcast it's running across all of them and um let me hide that again i think i measured i was getting a, like about 200 megabits per second down and about 70 80 megabits per second of upload and best of all that's because it's spread across all these connections if the verizon tower goes down which we've actually seen happen or this other tower goes down or this other tower goes down um we don't notice it. You know, the, the, it's all happening. It's all being bonded together into one meshed thing behind the scenes, which is really cool. And most of that, that upload capacity is all coming from the cellular plan. Starlink is usually going somewhere between 5 and 10. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, and um, yeah, so, so like for this broadcast, the, the minimum to sustain this quality of broadcast, which is an HD broadcast, was 11 megabits per second. And, and Starlink can't get Star that Starlink, Starlink, I would not trust an 11 megabits per second upload at all. Um, you know, it's definitely fine for, for Zoom because Zoom can dial down to low res and can handle drop-offs and stuff. If Particularly if you're not the presenter, but you're the the you're, you're watching and participating, you're not the main focus of a Zoom. Yeah, Starlink is great, but I wouldn't... If I was working online, which, hey, we do work online, I would always combine Starlink with at least one, if not two, cellular plans for mm -hmm. extra redundancy there. And um, So uh, Daniel asks, has there been a biggest internet freakout of the last year? And uh, we're not talking about the website going down, right, Daniel? <laughs> Daniel actually helps us with our website, too. Um, <laughs> I so think that's our biggest internet freakout. Yes. Oh, goodness. Um, but... Um, uh, in the last year, well, uh, I think the, the freak out people had of Starlink pulling. Well, the no, plug for us. Oh, for I us. I think he's asking about us. Um, I mean, there's constantly changing stuff, and Starlink is, keeps announcing new stuff. Like <laughs> always at eight o'clock on a Friday evening, when our team is ready to go off for the weekend, <laughs> our we have uh, Daniel Hemming um, works for us as well. He's our designated Starlink uh, person, so he's thank goodness for him because. He is sometimes working overnight, and then we pick up in the morning because he's Covers currently he's currently stuff. on Pacific time. Um, so we, we hand off, and he'll just work late at night, work covering the Starlink news. But as far as us, did we have any incidents 
on the road where in the last year, because we did a lot of travel over the summer. Do you remember any times in which we could not get online? Uh, there was the situation when we um, were in West Virginia in the, the trees. Um, Starlink would not get a connection oh, at all in those trees. Was this like the, the lavender farm? Was it like one place? <gasps> the yes. lavender farm. So, that wasn't a freak up because we knew going in yeah, that was it. not going to work. But, but we tried but, but everything it was, there. It was as extreme as you can get. So like in a valley in Appalachia <laughs> with lots of tall trees and Starlink was, we could get online with Starlink for like a minute at a time. So we were able to book our next campsite over Starlink, but it took like an hour to just get through a web page ordering form. We could not get any cellular. We tried all the boosters, tried up mast antennas, all this stuff. So so if we'd had a scheduled webinar or something like that, that, that would have been a freak out. That would have been a like go to plan B, mm -hmm. drive to town or drive to the top of the ridge where we can get a clear view of the sky or maybe a cellular booster. So, you know, e even with all this amazing amount of gear, and this wasn't quite as much because it was what was in our van, not what's on the boats. Oh, but I we mean, still, we, we had the Max BR2. Yeah, we had, and we, the BR2 had, had just come in. That's true. We had basically all this stuff in the van. But it was just <laughs> been and sold. We had Starlink. <laughs> yeah, we had all that. We didn't have the dome then. Yeah, we didn't have the dome. We had basically all of this gear equivalent on the van, which was kind of crazy. But yeah, that's what it makes it fun. But yeah, even with all that gear, there were places over the summer, get, we could not get a reliable connection. And definitely places where one of our solutions worked so much better than others. There are plenty of places, Starlink, we just could not get oh. online with it. Never mind, <laughs> not even for a little bit. Um, plenty of places where T-Mobile excelled, yeah. plenty of places that, where AT&T does, plenty of places where Verizon does. And Dish Network is the other one that we yeah. use, uh, the Project Genesis plan. Yeah, I'll actually give the geese on tour asking, is Starlink getting better? And we, we get a lot of, because like so many people in the forums we monitor and in, in our membership and stuff, People out west are like, Starlink is the best thing since sliced bread. We love it. It's amazing um, because they're out where there's big, wide open skies. Whereas we hear from people out east who are like, I got Starlink and I camped five different places and I couldn't get online any of them. And I'm sending it back in my return window. Because so there's two issues with the, with the east versus west coast thing. One is the trees. Uh -huh. uh, it needs that clear sky. The second big issue is congestion. So a lot of markets, Starlink is already oversold. And you get into the local cell that, where they have provision uh, of a certain <laughs> amount of data, and it's already being used. And the RV, or they renamed it Rome service a few weeks back, is always deprioritized data. So if you've got the Rome service and you are in a congested area, your speeds are going to be much slower, potentially super slow, almost unusable if you're in a congested area. And that's going to be in metro areas where right. there's a lot of residential service going on. Or Quartzite. We got a lot of yeah, reports yeah, of Starlink not yeah, keeping up when yeah. you had all the escapers together P at Particularly Bash. in evenings and stuff as people who are on the Rome plan, and we see this posted in forums, they're like, oh my god, my Starlink is only getting four or five megabits down, and there's dropouts, and there's buffering, and and yeah, because it's it's just like a cell tower. It's just like one satellite passing overhead, and if you've got hundreds of people trying to use that, well, that's a problem. And the the Rome plan, the one that they sold to RVers, is deprioritized below anybody who's got a residential plan, and that is a problem. Now, Starlink is. I mean, just just a couple of hours ago, we're we're here on the space coast of Florida, and we could see the the launch. We forget. We forgot to watch this one. We're not on the Space Coast. We're in Seminole okay, County. Okay, well, we're we near the Space Coast. We're inland from the Space Sorry, Coast. I lived on the Space You're Coast. I'm, I, 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 de I defend the boundaries of the Space Coast. <laughs> yeah. But Starlink, it's going to get better with more satellites. And they launched 50-something more just today. Yep. And and so the more satellites that are up there, the more uh, capacity they have to go around. So yeah. that will make it better. Yeah. But to get the capacity that they really need to serve the demand, it's going to take a lot of satellites. Yeah, and like thousands. More. Well, yeah, and and the catch with when you're launching a Starlink is low Earth orbit satellites, so the satellites are low, and that's why they get some better speeds and much lower latencies. But when you add more satellites, it's like melting butter on bread. You put a satellite, you can't just put a satellite over a congested area; it spreads. That satellite is just a little bit more capacity melted over the entire surface of the Earth. So there's a lot of capacity kind of being wasted out over the ocean mm -hmm. and stuff, and in northern Canada mm -hmm. and who knows where else, but to add more capacity to certain areas, they just need to keep putting more and more and more up there. And Starlink does have, they're beginning to launch or work on their second generation satellite constellation. So much more higher capacity satellites. Uh, they launched the first 21 or two of them um, as kind of prototypes. They're having some problem with those prototypes, it seems, but eventually they're going to start replacing and you know filling in the sky with these new generation of satellites that will again add more capacity but it's a long long process and 
and you know, eventually there will be Starlink competitors too, because Amazon's Project Kuiper is coming along, and even OneWeb and other things. So satellite's getting really interesting. Still a ways to go. I definitely would not make it your only thing if it is. If your needs are reliable, <laughs> yes. if you're okay with it, yes. if you're just going out and streaming. Uh, video. I mean, streaming services like watching YouTube videos, Netflix, Hulu, they buffer really well. So yes. if, even if you have some yes. trees around you mm -hmm. um, and your connection drops out for five or six seconds or even 30 seconds, the buffering that those streaming services do, you might not even notice it. Right. You're going to notice it when you're doing things that are interactive, gaming, right. yeah, video you, you, you can't survive a 30 second dropout when you're having a Zoom conference with your boss or you're in a deathmatch uh, competitive video gaming. so Or you're trying to snag a last minute cancellation of a campground. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, don't try that. Yes. On Starlink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a Starlink questions here. We've got a Jonathan saying, cool setup, but a lot to comprehend. And again, yeah, we love showing off the kind of the maximal setup you can do, but for most people, much, much less. Exactly. And <laughs> so it follows up that they use a very simple setup. Um, and yeah, if yeah. you're just having basic needs, checking email, watching some videos, hotspot off your phone, get a mobile hotspot device, oh my gosh, keep yeah. it simple. Um, you know, and just know that all three of the cellular carriers right now, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, they all have coverage maps that cover pretty much the entire U.S., but it's when you zoom in on those coverage maps that you get local differences. Yeah. Or so, when you're actually connected, there might be differences in real-world performance, whereas you might have a Verizon signal or an AT&T signal or T-Mobile signal, but it's nearly unusable, but you switch from Verizon to T-Mobile and suddenly you go from 4 megabits per second to 400. And we, we do see that sort of crazy difference. But for most people, <laughs> if you're getting 5 megabit per second down and enough yes. upload capacity to load a web page, you're fine. Uh -huh. I mean, you don't need these ridiculously high speeds to do normal stuff on the internet. <laughs> no, um, we fine. see so many people get obsessed about their speed test. And you know that when you run a speed test and you're getting like a two or 300 megabit per second speed, that speed test is using a half a gigabyte of data. <laughs> if, you down a, your data plan. if you have a cap data plan and you're going out there just running speed tests after speed tests, you're wasting all your data running speed tests. But if your speeds are normal enough, don't worry about it. Just, it, just it go unless on you're with having your day. fun, because like just like people like having soup up their fun. cars and like to like show off and go to drag strips and stuff. It's kind of fun to That's, go see yeah. how fast you. Can I'm get glad you're stuff. not into drag cars and that you're into. <laughs> I'm into fast internet, fun, you're not fast, fast cars. Internet, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, again, uh, Hoquan says it's thanks for the knowledge, but it gets expensive quickly, and it can. I mean, the, the BR2 is a very expensive router. Uh, some of the add-ons to it are very expensive, but you can also do things on the cheap, like like the like one of the best bargains and out there right now is like the um, Project Genesis plans. Yeah, Project um, Genesis um, is run by Dish Network, which was the fourth carrier that was created after the T-Mobile Sprint merger. $20 a month, you buy a hotspot device that is $350. You had unlimited data all over the country that roams onto, well, you use Dish's native network when you're in big cities, and then it roams onto AT&T T-Mobile, and they're not enforcing roaming. <laughs> yes, if you qualify for that plan, it's a great option. Uh, yeah, but the catch right now is Dish is still kind of have yeah they, they're, they're their sites yeah so, so so there's downsides but i mean we, we again we i'll shove the little plan picks thing there where is that Bing. there we go um you, you can find cheap plans that can give you potentially mm -hmm. unlimited data and stuff like that and um relatively cheap hardware and not necessarily go crazy overkill where you're doing multiple redundant connections mm -hmm. simultaneously and for a lot of people that is all you need. And then if you have reason to have more, you could ramp up and add more and more and more. And, you know, some people never stop. And I mean, you know. Yeah, so one of the, <laughs> the if you're wanting Peplink gear, um, the Balance 20X is a router that goes, starts at $549. And it comes with a mid-level LTE modem, a right, Cat7. Right. But it has a modem module that when you're ready, you can add in a 5G modem module. Or it's, it's cheap enough that you could just upgrade to better hardware in a year or two or three mm -hmm. when you're ready and the 5G networks mm -hmm. are have mm -hmm. more value. But it hardware. also has a USB tethering port, which mm -hmm. a lot of Peplink gear doesn't have. Yes. So you can tether a hotspot device. And it has uh, two uh, Ethernet WAN ports um, that you can tether in other devices like Starlink or if you got T-Mobile Home Internet or other options out there. So you can still get this highly redundant setup with a base router that starts at $549 <laughs> instead of ours, which is twenty eight ninety nine. dollars Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, very, you know, there's kind of a world of difference if 
of some some features, but a lot of the basics are still there in that 549 balance 20x. That's kind of our like favorite to point people to in some mm -hmm. ways. I'm going to take this one from Jay Lewis about Starlink changing for boaters. Well, this is actually a really interesting question because SpaceX still does not officially um, have a plan acknowledge, for cons uh, acknowledge mainstream boaters. So they have, it brought out Starlink Maritime, which was initially $10,000 hardware and $5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. They've now brought that down to $2,500 for the hardware and $1,000 a month. No, 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 5000 for the hardware. Well, no, you can get just a single one. You can get a single one. Yeah, you can get a single one. Okay. So yes, twenty five hundred for the hardware and a thousand dollars a month for one terabyte of data that is 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 capped and then you're throttled after that. But it works globally. What they don't have so <laughs> and they came out with the Rome plan, they specifically have in the terms of service that it's geo locked to land. Right. So there is so that's got a lot of us boaters concerned. Like how specific are they getting with what defines land? We're in a lake in the middle of Florida. Are <laughs> right. they going to lock us out on the right. lake? If someone's cruising up the ICW, are, are they, they going to lock them out? What about how far cruising offshore? Shore? We don't and, know. They have not defined this and, officially. And, and, yeah, and the thing is, there's a lot of boaters who've been buying the Starlink RV plan, which is now Robert. the Starlink Rome plan, and have been traveling the world with that $150 a month plan, using it crossing oceans and doing all these things. But at some point in time, it seems almost inevitable that SpaceX will lock that down and say, no, if you want marine use, you've got to buy our marine plans. They know where you are and what kind of hardware you are and which plan. They just need to flip a switch. And so that has a lot of boaters nervous. Is there's no official way to use Starlink on the water other than that very expensive maritime plan. That could change. We kind of expect that the way it will probably work is Inland waterways, intercoastal, close to shore, probably be fine. And then they will start selling something called ocean data, which they have mentioned in the terms of service, but not officially announced or priced or defined. And they might have some more cruiser friendly version of this works offshore. But that hasn't happened yet. And I understand people are very nervous. They don't want to invest in hardware that might not be supported until SpaceX gives them a, gives clear them a guidance. clarification. They're clearly do not have a product or market for the consumer, consumer cruiser, boater, yes. cruiser, people like us. Um, so a lot of us have been using Starlink since it came out on our boats. We, we cruise with it in motion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we use it at anchor, yeah. no problem. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's an unknown right now, but yeah. it is enabling, I mean, because for boaters, uh, international lines are not as, <laughs> defined for us <laughs> as they are when we're on land. So we could cruise into Canada, we cruise over to the Bahamas. And right now, Starlink just works when you cross borders. <laughs> and that's great for cruisers. And it, the, the start, because the satellites are over the ocean all yeah. the time, the way the constellation works, it gives great connectivity offshore, which is something, you know, you go more than that 20 miles offshore, you start to lose cellular connection if you don't have really, really high gain antennas, um, even less and than high that. Mass, and yeah, high mass. And high mass. Um, so, you know, Starlink gives you a lot more connectivity yeah. options. So, than... so again, Starlink. When I, when you look at the price of boat gear, the, the Starlink Roam, the, which is basically the RV hardware, the Starlink on a stick, not the flat in motion system, is relatively cheap. It's not the best built hardware. I wouldn't trust it to survive for years Hi, on um, to survive for years on under salt spray and water and stuff. But there'll be better stuff in a year or two or three. So, you know, get it. Treat it as a, you're, you're getting amazing internet that would have been impossible mm -hmm. just a year or two ago. And if either the terms of the service change or the plans change or something like that, um, well, then adapt. <laughs> but right now, yeah, you know, use it until it doesn't work. Starlink, you know, my biggest issue with Starlink, and I put it in but, that pop-up card, and we didn't actually talk about it in the video, is that they keep changing the term, the pricing, the plans. On a whim. <laughs> on a tweet, yes. um, So, like, one of the biggest changes they made recently is it used to be if you had the residential service, which was 110 a month, which now got up to 120 a month in a lot of markets, you used to be able to add on portability as you needed it and take that service with you. And that was a great option for those that have a part-time home base and maybe are on the mm -hmm. road part-time. Or if you're in an area for a long term, you could just change your service address, have the residential plan, get the higher priority service. And then when you're traveling, you're mm -hmm. in the roam mode, the best <laughs> effort. They just took that away. They made no announcement about it. They just put it in the terms of service. 
Um, it only took some, you know, some people who actually read these terms of service on a routine <laughs> basis, i.e. our team, and some others who are in some of these Facebook groups and Reddit groups, um, to find that, whoa, they took away portability with no notification. Um, and that's a major change for people that yeah. aren't full time on the road. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually going to impact us because um, you know we have the residential service and we're just turning on portability when we left or where we kind of made a home base in Sanford. Well, now we've got the residential service, we might have to give that up and lose our high priority data here in Sanford if we want to travel with the Starlink system we currently have. Or, well, SpaceX would be happy to sell us a second Starlink system and a whole second plan. So Yeah, I'm not going to be happy to pay yeah, for it. so because so, once you give up your residential service, you might not be able to get it back or you might not be able to get priority back at your home address. So there's all these, like, just SpaceX, God, you're giving us headaches. And that's just frustrating. Yes. Yes. Now we do have Kiki. Kiki. Is, uh, yes, your, your fans, clubs are looking for you here, Kiki. So um, Richard's been a Kiki fan for all the way back. Yep. Yeah. So um, if there's <laughs> any other mobile internet questions, uh, get them in the, the chat queue. If not, we're going to uh, open it up to just general questions about mo uh, mobile life, um, us, whatever, Kiki, <laughs> whatever. So uh, the geeks want to know if we want to say anything about our village. Our and yes, village, two more days left until two it's Two more gone. days. So, uh, our village was a social network for our viewers that we helped launch back in um, ten years ago, almost ten years ago. Well, it launched nine years ago, but we were on the project for almost ten uh, ten years ago, um, and um, yeah, it got bought by Thor in twenty twenty, and then they had also bought Campendium and Road Trippers and a couple other RV sites. I think Overnight RV Parking. There might have been some others in there, yeah. and they kind of packaged them all together as this Road Pass collection. Road of, Pass Digital. And then they sold that about a year ago, that whole package to another company, and that company is shutting down our village as of Friday. With only like a couple days notice. No, a, a month. Oh, okay, one month notice, which is yeah, for you know, a big, so, still yeah. very active RV social network, but they just decided that yeah. they couldn't figure out how to do anything with it. They paid a fortune for it and are throwing it out the window with no forward transition plan, um, conver years of conversations and forums and yeah, connections people, and maps and, friendships people have yeah, made there's all, a bunch of groups that use yeah. our village as their central meeting yeah. ground and they're just pulling the plug um we're very sad to see it go we personally haven't really used our village in many years um we, we stepped we we were we were core central in launching it and doing some of the initial design and everything but we stepped back in the end of that you know, basically that right. first year we just yeah, we went saw, back we, to being advisors not yeah, the, core the, it, the site had so much potential <laughs> um and you know we loved working on it, um, and there's a lot of potential that wasn't realized. Yes. And um, I don't think I'll want to go into an analysis <laughs> on it. If wherever meet you on on the mm -hmm. road over a campfire, we're happy to, to share more. But um, behind the scenes, yes. But, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of potential that was never realized, and uh, the. Our village went a very different direction with the original vision was, which was primarily around checking into your campground and meeting, meeting people around people. you, whereas the groups, which were this feature that was in the social networking platform that was used to develop our village on, just happened to have on. And those took off. Those took off. And that wasn't part of the original plan. And uh, <laughs> so but it made all these great th um, groups for people to connect in on different topics. And then the rallies were amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Curtis Coleman did an amazing job with hosting these rallies. We went to a few of them and one of some of the best rallies we've been to other than yeah. escapers. And uh, yeah, so a lot of friendships, a lot of people. And yeah, no, I mean, these people, their, their friendships are lifelong, but it, there, there is no equivalent tool for meeting other like meeting people who are near you at a campground you know that's the you don't have that sort of connectivity mm -hmm. on uh facebook oh yeah questions about the great loop yeah we could talk about that the so great the loop. great loop is still there <laughs> it has not um, <laughs> flooded away or but the, we are the, the, the uh the border to canada is open again so yeah. you can actually continue the great loop um we've kind of like not it's, feeling called to it not not this year it's it's we've we've um gotten velcroed in pretty tight in here to Sanford and um, the we've been taking on some boat projects here we're actually going downriver to Jacksonville in a month um, to take on a bunch of other boat projects and do a little then, cruising around but and then it'd be too late in the season to really dive start into, the loop into this it year. and we're really really enjoying having a bit of a home base which we haven't had now uh, Saturday is Chris's 17 year oh. nomad anniversary so we have 17 years of full-time travel under our belts and uh, Sanford in the last three years has just 
<laughs> it, it's not just, I mean, the town is amazing. There's so much going on here, so many events, but we're making local friends. Yeah. And that's something and, we don't get on the road. We've made lots of friends on the road and we see them over and over again. But there's that continuity just isn't as tight as it can be nice. And we're really just enjoying having a network of friends locally and things to do uh doctors that we know then getting to know <laughs> yeah, and, we've had we've had stuff to do there yeah yep yeah. so you know we're, we're both well yeah. he's 50 i'm approaching 50 it's <laughs> yeah. the, the warranty apparently goes out so yeah. doctors are becoming more and more important and, and um <laughs> one thing that uh, jayla says is, is sanford permanent i'm not sure i'd say anything is permanent because yeah. we're still nom nomads and we're, we're still planning mm -hmm. to a van trip we're going to be out hey, west speaking of year. one of our friends oh, yes, I know. Uh -huh. yeah we're, we're going to be taking a, a van trip out to see zephyr and, and you know spending a bunch yeah. of time on the road because florida in the summer is not necessarily the fun. greatest place to be now there's arizona by the way. and and uh, true but the, the, <laughs> there's a lot of fun places to go and um part of what has this kind of you know, not wanting to leave take why not away from sanford too permanently at the moment is because of all the damage at this marina from uh, Hurricane Ian, uh, the, so many of the, the slips were destroyed. If we give up our slip, we would not be able to come back. It would be, if we a did the loop, we would not be able to come back. And... It'd be a multi-year wait to get a slip <laughs> back in here. So, and so we we're not ready to... exactly what we so want that, to do. So that really regard. did change things for us. When we thought, you know, originally when we were going to go do the loop for a year or two, I mean, it looked like, okay, it, you know, we might have a couple month wait to get back into the marina, but we could, you know, call them as we're making our way this way. Make a reservation. If now this is like, where nope. we wanted to kind of end the journey at, which we're pretty sure we would because it's close to family for us and we have yeah. just so much going here. But when that option kind of went away, we're like, oh, just not willing to give up our spot here yet. <laughs> and I don't want to start the loop and, um, you know, another pandemic level thing happening yeah. on the road or a health issue for yeah. us coming up or something. So, so we, we'll, we'll see when not it goes ready. right. Yeah, yeah. But right now our plans are cruise uh, for mm -hmm. a while, starting in April, um, but not give up our slip, come back and then take a, a big van trip. Yep. So we're, we're kind of looking at keeping Sanford as a home base. And then bouncing away and from doing it. And doing other adventures, uh, still all revolved around what <laughs> Kiki's 14 and a half now yes. and she's doing great um so we want to continue to include her in our adventures and uh she really likes RV life better than boat life she loves the boat but mm -hmm. she really loves being able to get out on her leash and explore a campground and yes. see birds and things like that whereas she gets kind of bored here on the boat so we try to give her adventures yeah uh, we have been taking van trips actually away you know we did the beach not too just a mm -hmm. couple weeks ago and stuff like that mm -hmm. and yeah we get out our being with and, sabina and, 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 and sabina brings kiki salmon and uh treats from, from germany. germany she yeah, travels she to, to germany, germany to just to bring her... our cat and then she bought galoshes so that she could come visit kiki <laughs> during the floods that's how amazing our local friend network is so here. i don't I, I, like who's a bigger kiki fan uh, uh sabina Rich? or richard i don't know they, they, they might have to fight over who's or like you know who's their biggest fan <laughs> <laughs> okay any other questions because i think we're catching up and it's been 50 minutes for this. yes so uh chris is celebrating his nomad anniversary and uh if you know you've followed him for any length of time he usually has a nomad anniversary post and he has been working and typing a lot on his computer i have not seen it i do not know what his April 1st Nomadavari post is. So that will, be, will be coming be to the blog soon. It will be published on Technomadia on April 1st. So you'll see my thoughts on 17 years on the road and some interesting prognostications. So definitely check that out. Prognostications. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, yep. Our village ending on Friday, Nomadiversary on Saturday. Uh, Monday is our six years of being legally tied oh, yeah. to each other. Yes, yes, yeah, it gets cheaper boat insurance. It's yeah, good reason to get yeah. legally. Yeah. Yeah. Ding. <laughs> yep. So we'll be yeah. lots to celebrate this uh -huh. week. Well, I don't know. Our village is mourning. It's a mix. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do have a question here from Bill. That the obvious thing is, couldn't we just keep paying and maybe sublet the slip? And we, we can keep paying for it. We can't sublet it. Right. So, so yeah. So, so the marina then could double book it, and 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 again, indeed, that's what we're doing. We're going to be out on the boat for a couple months, uh, starting in April, and we are going to keep paying for the slip so that we can come back. And if at any point we decide, you know, we head out cruising either this year or next year, and we decide, hey, you know, we are, yeah, we are heading out, out, then we'll, we'll, just, then we'll call. just call them and say, yeah, we give it up. But um, right now, we're not. It's willing it's, to give it it's up. <laughs> cheap and it, not cheap. I mean, but it's affordable enough that we're willing to pay to have the insurance to keep it for ourselves. So. <laughs> Um, we do love it here yes. and 
Yeah, I'm wearing my Sanford Porch Fest shirt. Yes. You know, and one of these amazing local yes. events here in Sanford. Yes. I do have to say, you know, Richard, you may be one of her biggest fans, but Sabina is Kiki's aunt, so... So, and Kiki, she does bring Kiki treats, treats from, from Germany. Germany. So, so <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> but you guys, Kiki loves you both. So there we go. I I, I think Kiki loves the salmon. <laughs> okay, that's true. <laughs> All right, guys, it has been fun to share this with you. I hope you learned something about mobile internet um if you have more questions if you're one of our members of course reach out to us in the member forums and all that stuff um mobile internet is a topic of interest to you come explore mm -hmm. the mobile internet resource center a bunch of free content there and uh if you want to go further we do offer the membership um we are all, all member funded yep. so that's just the way we roll give away a lot of free <laughs> content and mm -hmm make it possible there's now eight of us working on the mobile internet resource center if you'd asked me eight years ago <laughs> if we would still be doing this yeah. i would have if said, it wasn't for having six other people besides us i would not would have be been doing shut this. down you know, we oh, couldn't yeah. we couldn't have handled it anymore and now that lets us actually get we managed to dial ourselves down from no longer doing this more than full time so and a lot of times a lot of weeks we're actually successful in working under 20 hours yeah and we've been like the long bike rides that we've mm -hmm. been doing have been amazing I and mean, basically every wednesday we take half a day and go for like 40 mile bike rides and all sorts of other fun stuff we've yep. been yeah we've been doing good things yep. still we're still running three times a week too at <laughs> least <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> all right so if yeah. you enjoy these lives uh make sure you leave a comment uh give us a thumbs up or something uh, because mm -hmm. it is your interaction that keeps us motivated to come back and do these again yeah no, and, no and, no comments no views makes it not as much fun yeah. for us so. and, and again i just having gone through this new live software it's got some nice upgrades it was kind of fun to play with setting up again maybe we'll be encouraged to do some more lives we just need to think of good things to do with Oman. so let us know what you'd like to see us hang out and do these because well, the lives are kind of fun and easy and, they are and, fun yeah. and yeah the produce videos they take a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> and we always produce so many videos for merc that we I, don't I have, have no do them for ourselves i have no energy left for doing <laughs> produce videos personally but i don't know the lives can be fun yeah. and mm -hmm. interesting so mm -hmm. but. okay so great, everybody. We're going to end. We're going to wrap up with just a little outro of some of our um, sights and sounds of our last, last few months here. So see you all. Take care.